Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, hope you're all doing marvellously well. And today I'm going to be doing a video on Reaper on something that I've been using a bit more recently called Snapshots. Let's say that you've got a mix of a song that you're perfectly happy with. You like how it is, you like how your levels are set, all your effects are set. Then you get some mix revisions from a client. You make those changes, maybe you're not happy with it, but you've hit save already and all those changes are gone. With snapshots, we can call back exactly how things were, go back between old and new, old and new, as many different variations as we like within a single project file. And that means that we can keep recalling old styles, new styles, and change pretty much everything about a project as we like it. As usual, these videos are brought to you by the Pro Mix Academy and the, the Ultimate Reaper Guide and the Audio Essentials. All those kind of things, the links are down in the description, but that's the ultimate guide where we take you through the everything, start to finish of how to use Reaper. Anyway, on with the show. Okay, I've got Reaper open, and if we want to use snapshots, we're going to need the SWS extension, which is free and is available at sws-extension.org. A huge percentage of Reaper users that I know have the SWS extensions installed because they are so so powerful so yeah get those downloaded for whether it's windows mac linux whichever platform you're using get them installed and then when you bring up reaper you will have another option at the top under extensions all these things will appear as options and one of them that we're going to use is snapshots so that brings me up this window which i'm zooming in on uh, if I was to hit play on this mix that I'm working on, sounds good. And I'm happy with that mix now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of this snapshots window and click new. And that's given me the date, the time and a name. And I'm going to call this and I'm going to rename this with a right click to Adam's happy mix. And then I can hit save on the project and that will save this snapshot in here. I mean, it already saved it, but save your files regularly. That's always a good thing to do. And now let's say, for instance, I get a call from the artist and they go, it's kind of cool, but I'm not happy with the, the kick sound. I want the guitars to sound a little different. So at that point, I can do things like I can take down this kick, I can bring up this kick, change effect. So let's turn up some low end on that. And we can change the EQ on the guitars to have more low mids and... Even so far as changing out the limiter, I'm using FGX2. Let's turn that off and turn on our previous limiter flatline. It's a subtle change, but I'm going to make a new snapshot with... Uh, let's just right click on that and let's rename this one to uh, Client Revision 1. And that way, again, when I hit save, because you should always hit save, I can hear the difference between these very quickly. And so if I hit play from here and go, how does this sound now? And now I double click on Adam's happy mix and that's just recalled everything. And you could see all the settings change there. If I go back to client revision one and give that a double click, it'll take a few seconds, but there's that mid bump. Uh, flatline is now enabled. The ch settings all changed on Infinistrip. Yeah, so if you ever find that you've got to a point with a mix where you're like, I'm happy with this now, make yourself a snapshot because then when you come back the next day and you're not happy with it, 
you can then tweak it so that you're more happy with it, save a new snapshot, and when that doubt creeps in of, oh, maybe the old mix was better, you can then double-click on the old mix. Now, this is where we can really start to deep dive into snapshots because snapshots are not just about the entire mix. So let's go back to Adam's happy mix. And how about, let's say, the guitars, I really like the guitars this way but I'm going to change some of the mix and I might end up tweaking the guitars to fit, but I might want to come back to just the guitars. And this is where it gets really clever because I can shift and click on all these guitar tracks, the blue ones down here that are behind my head. So let's just close the EQ down. So these blue ones, I've now shift clicked those. And in the snapshots, I can click the button that says save selected tracks only. So when I control and click in there, that's made me, I hit new and that's now made me mix three just of these guitars. So if I rename that to heavy guitars, I like. That's not saved the entire project as a snapshot, that's just saved how these guitars are set. And it does save everything. It saves automation, it saves plugin settings, it saves routing, it saves whether something's disabled or enabled. Everything about those tracks is new for that snapshot. And we can go the other way. Let's say that I like the master track settings that I got on the client revision, but not the rest of it. Let's click recall selected tracks only click on the master and then click on client revision one. Give that a double click. And that's that's got flatline brought up as the master pro processor limiter, but not FGX2. Or still with the master selected, I can go back to Adam's happy mix on that. And that goes back to FGX2. Again, just for the master, just for the selected track. So I could then go backwards and forwards using this on a b testing a single track a group of tracks or the entire mix really really powerful uh there's show snapshots for selected tracks only so if i've got a track selected that isn't say the guitars where we made that separate snapshot that disappears if i click on guitars that appears so they are hidden and away from our brain space when we're not using them very, very powerful. There's also a tick button prompt for name. So instead of me having to rename them each time, I can have it say, uh, if I go new, what is the name? So I can go modern two or something like that. And that's probably what I want to do each time. We can even decide which things we want to save, pan, volume, mute, effects, chain, sends, selections, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we can choose all of that or what I prefer is just full track mix. But if you're trying to retain certain things about it, you can do snapshot saving just with that right there. You can even have it recall deleted tracks if you decided to delete something and a snapshot brings it all back. This is really powerful stuff. Uh, let's put some automation in here on this guitar. Save that as a new auto one, just to kind of prove that point. Now, if I go back to Adam's happy mix and the timestamp is from 10 minutes ago, that automation has now disappeared. If I bring in auto one, that should, there's that automation. So I can do things like have a slightly less aggressive vocal compressor and then ride the vocal. And then I can choose between using that or a more aggressive compressor with less automation. And because it saves the entire automation each time, I can then decide which one do I like better without having to undo and redo all the work or having to close down the project, open a new version of the project, which depending on how busy and how dense a mix is, that can take a good couple of minutes to open a full project. So instead I can double click and in four seconds, I can A, B between them, which is really useful. And it means that in one project file, if I get that phone call and I go, hey, listen to this, no, listen to my mix. No, listen to this mix. I can very quickly iterate through them for somebody 
and they can go, oh, actually, I do prefer your mix when we put them completely back to back. You know, that kind of thing makes this useful for me. So there you go. Like I said, I've started using snapshots. It's not something I used to use. I used to make loads of different project files, but it's such a pain to maintain and keep up when we can just have one easy thing that does everything. Thanks everybody for watching. Check out the ultimate Reaper guide and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.